Hey there, welcome to my course on creating five-year financial models in Excel. If you want to download the Excel files and follow along, you can do so on the first link in the description below. Hi, and welcome to the Create a Dynamic Five-Year Financial Model in Excel course. In terms of learning objectives for this course, by the end of it, you'll be able to create robust and dynamic financial models in Excel starting from scratch. We'll go through the process of identifying key assumptions that would drive the model and the performance. We'll also prepare custom outputs to address the varying needs of uh, different stakeholders like equity investors or lenders, etc. By the end of the course, you'll be able to add value to any financial model with dynamic scenarios and sensitivity analysis. You'll be able to structure complex Excel models that remain easy to read and you'll be able to apply professional formatting that makes your spreadsheet stand out. In terms of compatibility, the whole course is recorded on Microsoft Excel 365. However, all functionality is available in older versions of Excel. Excel 2010 and up should be fine. The course is also recorded using Windows 10, which means that all the shortcuts that we're using in Excel are the Windows shortcuts. And while it's possible to do everything with the menu systems, if you're a Mac user, it would be much better if you figure out the corresponding Excel shortcuts in Mac and apply those as we go along. In terms of resources, you get a complete financial model in Excel that you can easily reuse for different companies. You also get a dedicated Excel add-in with useful modeling features and tools. I know sometimes it's hard to install add-ins, especially if you're participating in the course from company computer. All the features that the add-in has can be done manually. It's just something to speed up your workflow. So I strongly suggest talking to your uh, IT department and asking them to install it for you. And should you want to skip ahead and start from a certain point of the course, the current state of the model project will be available for downloads in the resources for each lecture. Before we get started working in Excel, we'll be using some features that you need to show the developer tab for, and uh, the developer tab is hidden by default. The easiest way to show it is to right click anywhere on the ribbon, click customize the ribbon, just scroll here and find developer. Place the check mark, hit OK, and now you have the developer code. The developer code allows you to work with VBA, Visual Basic for Applications, is the language that uh, you can write macros in. And it also allows you to enable and disable plugins. And uh, most importantly, we'll be able to insert some form controls that we're going to use for drop downs within our project. Alongside the course, you're also getting the Minty Tools Student Edition add-in for Excel, which you can download from the resources, or you can always go to this URL and download it there. Keep in mind, you don't need to have the add-in in order to follow along with the course. It's just a bunch of tools that would speed up certain tasks, but you'll still be able to follow everything we do without installing the add-in if you're using a company computer or if it's just too much of a hassle. Download it, just run it. And uh, Windows will probably tell you that Microsoft Defender's smart screen prevented an unrecognized app. But if you go to more info, you'll see that there's a valid publisher. Just click run anyway. And here, once again, you can see the certificate of the publisher. It's still warning you. It's just the nature of uh, Microsoft Windows. Just click install. And that's it. And the best part is that it would regularly check for updates. So if one of you finds a bug or if I decide to add additional features, it would automatically update. Should you want to remove it later on, you can just go to apps and features and look for Minty. And here you have it. You can press uninstall and it would remove it from Excel. Now, if you open Excel, you have this tab, Minty Tool Student, where you get a few features and tools that would uh, speed up your workflow. The first one is Apply Formatting. It allows you to apply consistent formatting to all your tabs. So let's say our working title is going to be Financial Model. Just going to leave the positions. This is going to be Fin Model. And my company is Ackman. You can change those colors and they'll persist. Just gonna go ahead and uh, leave them as they are. Apply style and you see, let me zoom in a bit. And it applies a 
sort of a header for the tab. If you apply this to each tab, you keep this consistency that uh, makes it look much more professional and it's much easier to read through the whole file. The way I usually do that is, let's say I have some uh, dummy data here. I'll just add a bunch of lines. I'll add one column at the beginning and then I'm gonna apply formatting. A working title will be data selection, it's gonna be data. And you see that my company name and currency persisted, apply style and it's formatted the same way. Another thing that you can do is, let's say we have quite a complex working here and uh, we can select various types of cells. So let's say I wanna select all the cells with formulas and I can get a better idea of which cells are formulas, which ones are inputs. I can also select all numeric cells, which would be my inputs. Select all text cells, select all the text in the tab and also select all cells with errors but we don't have any errors in here, so this won't return anything. Something else that uh, we can do is numbers coloring, and this is really important when we're working on complex stuff, because let's say you've just finished this complex model, you know how everything flows, you know how everything works, but if you look at it six months from now, or if you share it with someone, they probably be lost in it, so it's quite a good idea to get into the habit of having a color legend for your files. I'm gonna grab everything all the way down to here. I'm gonna click numbers coloring and you see that we can apply it to the selected range or to the entire sheet. I usually work with selected range because entire sheet would color my ears as well and I don't want that. You can check which ones you want to format and you can also uh, change the colors here to match your uh, preferences. That's the way I work. Formulas are black, values are uh, blue and external links, meaning links to other tabs and to other files are in green. Just click apply style and you see that all the numeric inputs became blue. All the formulas are black and all the cells that link to other tabs are green. Next you have sheet duplicator and uh, I know you can right click and move or copy and uh, make a copy of the tab but the idea here is that let's say we have this structure for a model. You can just go ahead to duplicate a sheet and let's say I want to have four duplicates and I want those to be called ABC, DEF, XYZ and ACME. Click duplicate and I have four copies of this model that I can start pouring data into. So let's say you've been working, you've zoomed in everything a bunch to be uh, easier to check formulas and to see uh, how things link to each other. Before I send the file, I like it to all be zoomed in at the same percentage down here and I want it all to be scrolled to the top. I have this reset zoom here. You can just select multiple sheets, holding control and apply it to the selected sheets or to the entire workbook. You can type in whatever percentage you want, click apply and now it's all at 100% and it's all at the top. Let's say I plan to work on it on a laptop. I'll just go 150 and so now it would be much easier to see what I'm working on. And you probably noticed I skipped this one, the table of contents. So let's say we've already have like quite a lot of tabs in our file. Just add a table of contents. I want all the worksheets to be included. I can add the sheet name, the table of contents name. It can either be a new one or subsequently, if you want, you can edit existing table of contents. All those are the same and uh, this is an important section where you can add a link back to the table of contents. And because on the apply formatting, we left it at B2 for the sheet name. That's why we can now pull from B2 to get the sheet name reference location. And we can place a backlink in B1. Just click add table of contents. I now have this table of contents. Let me zoom it in a bit. Or I can just, let's say, click on numbers. It will take me to the numbers tab. And I can click back to table of contents up at the top. And as soon as you, let's say, you remove a tab, you can come back here, 
table of contents, and it automatically selects that you're on the TOC tab, table of contents. And now this uh, tab ACME is no longer available here. Just click update and it's gonna remove it from here and update your table of contents. That's pretty much it. You can do all of those manually, but it would save you a lot of time if you can have the add-in installed. I know a lot of you would be taking this from a company computer. Usually you won't be able to install software on, on those, but I strongly suggest you get in touch with your IT department and ask them to install the plugin for you. Thank you for watching another part of the course. As soon as the next video is uploaded, you'll find it right here. By the way, if you can spare a minute, I would love to hear your thoughts on the course and uh, whether it's uh, living up to your expectations. If you're watching on the website, you can do so by the feedback button up there. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, just drop a comment down below. Thank you.